My name is Christy and this is Live in La Vida Nomad. Today I wanted to talk about work away and woofing tips. So work away and woofing are like um, work for stay sites. They're a little bit different from each other but they're similar in the fact that you do, technically you do a half a day of work in exchange for room and board. Um, woofing has been a lot around for a very long time. Work away is somewhat newer. So woofing is willing workers of organic farmers. And so most of their hosts are farmers um, and rural, more rural settings. So um, we've been on a um, to a woofing host that was like um, a horse ranch and so we did painting of fences we fed horses we things like that um, we've also done um, tea picking and different things like that um, and then work away is sometimes rural but sometimes it's more um, city so you'll get a lot of like volunteering in schools teaching English or whatever. Um, there's also sometimes families that just want you to speak English to their children. There's um, like nanny work. There's, it's more broad work away. So I will put the links to work away here. And then I will also put the link to woofing here. Um, so here are my tips for work away and woofing to make it successful for you. So the main tip is to pound out all the details before you even get on the plane. So um, because of sometimes there's like language differences and your idea of what you're going to be doing and, and where you're going to be staying and things like that are different than their idea. So make sure you know exactly what the accommodations are going to be, um, exactly how many hours are going to be required of you per day. Because some people think it's just free labor and it kind of is, but it kind of is not. Because um, some places think it's free labor and they want you to work a 14 hour day for your stay. And that's not fair. It's supposed to be a half hour of, or a half a day of work, four to five hours, and then you have the rest of the day free. And in some of the places I've been, it's been like you work the whole day and then you get a whole day off. And then you work the whole day and then you get a whole day off. Or you work, you know, three days and you get four days off or whatever it works out to. So you need to negotiate that before you even get there. Um, and you also need to know that some countries really frown on work away and woofing um, because they consider it work. So we had a girl stay with us and she had a work away set up to, I don't know what they were gonna be doing, but her and her friend had the work away set up and um, and they were coming to Canada and Canada found the work away info on her phone and they were gonna deny her entry because it's considered work and she was coming on a tourist visa. But she said, never mind, I won't do that. And um, she had a friend who lived 
in Vancouver where they landed and the, the friend said that they could stay there. So they ended up being allowed to come in because they had that friend there. But make sure that you understand that some countries really frown on, on work away and they do not want to let you in on a visitor visa doing work away. So one way around that is to, you know, just for the first, you know, two weeks or whatever, set up like couch surfing or rent a hotel or whatever, and then do your work away. But that's not something that you need to tell a um, customs agent that I told you. Um, <laughs> So, and the other thing is really be honest with your abilities and what you're willing to do. So, I mean, as much as working on a horse farm or a horse ranch sounds great, um, are you willing to, you know, shovel horse poop for four hours a day? Or, you know, um, if you don't have a lot of experience with children, are you willing to sit in a room with 60 children and try and teach them English? Um, so just be really honest about your abilities and what you're able to provide. Um, and if you are a family like we are, then, you know, I'm very honest with the hosts and I say, look, um, it's myself and my, for example, my three children, um, my daughter is able to look after, or my son is able to look after the two year old, my daughter and I can can work. I'm, you know, and sometimes in the past I've had to provide food for, you know, some of the food and I'm okay with that. Um, but in, I mean, it, overall it's been okay. So, you know, just really, really work out the details on what the whole situation is going to look like what's expected of you, where you're going to stay, um, how many hours are expected of you, you know, and all of these things and kind of get them down in an email. So, um, and the other thing I wanted to mention is that work away and woofing, um, charge you a fee. And I think, I think it's about $30, but the $30 is really worth it, especially, um, woofing has been around for ages and, um, the $30 gives you access to their database, which has hosts in it and same with work away. Um, and it really helps to, um, to kind of know that you're getting reliable people. Um, and so, so paying is worth it. And if you think about it, um, if you were to rent a hotel, for example, in that area, you would pay more than $30 for one night. And most of these, they want you to stay a minimum of a week, sometimes more. So, and they will have the commitment length there, but generally it's not for just like one night. And the other thing is that work away and woofing are generally more rural. So if you want to stay in a city and you want to see all the sites, then it's probably better that you do couch surfing. But if you want to be in a more rural setting and you want to experience the culture and the people and things like that, then work away and woofing are absolutely for you. And you can really immerse yourself in the culture and it's really great experience.